Holy Gorbov, I-15 and I-152 and I-153, and the pug-nosed seagull. Holy Gorbov's I-15 fought with great effect in a number of conflicts before spawning the equally effective I-152 and I-153. The I-153 must surely claim a place alongside Fiat CR-42 as one of the ultimate biplane fighters. With a string of biplane fighter designs, most notably the I-5, and a spell in prison behind him, Nikolai Nikolaevic Bolikorpov designed the I-15 for completion in October of 1933. Powered by an imported 630 horsepower Wright R-1820 Cyclone radial piston engine, the I-15 featured a gull configuration for its top wing. This distinctive feature soon gave rise to the nickname Chaika, or Seagull. The I-15 was based closely on the I-5 in terms of its construction, with a fabric and dural covered chrome molybdenum steel alloy tube fuselage and fabric covered wooden wings. It was designed to fit in with the new Soviet doctrine for air combat, which involved using a combination of highly maneuverable biplane fighters in concert with fast monoplane fighters. The monoplane part of this combination, the I-16, was also supplied by Polikorpov, earning him the nickname the King of Fighters. Preparations for mass production of the I-15 began even before trials had been completed. The aircraft entering service from late 1934 with an armament of two 0.3-inch or 7.62mm PV-1 machine guns synchronized to fire through the propeller disc. Unfortunately, development and production of the license-built M25 variant of the R1820 engine was slow, and while prototype and early production I-15s employed imported engines, the majority of production aircraft was fitted with the 480 horsepower M22 engine, resulting in a drastic degradation of performance. This was especially the case when the optional underwing armament of four 22-pound bombs or chemical weapon containers was fitted. A situation also exacerbated by the fitting of an extra pair of machine guns in later production machines. Spanish Combat Although production of the I-15 continued through 1935 to the extent of some 384 aircraft, it was clear that high-ranking officials at the VVS, Soviet Air Force, were unhappy with the gull-winged layout of the I-15, and Polikorpov only managed to avert the withdrawal of his fighter from service by a personal plea to Stalin. In Spain, however, the I-15 soon began to show its excellence during the Spanish Civil War. In addition to batches supplied by the Soviet Union, the Republican side built some 287 I-15s under license, of which around 80 entered squadron service, nicknamed Chato or Pug Nose. The aircraft proved outstanding, proving near unbeatable in air-to-air -air combat until the arrival of nationalist Fiat G-50s and Messerschmitt BF-109s and a small number of Chattos survived into the early 1950s. The I-15 Biz and Super Chato In an effort to settle his doubters at the VVS, Polikorpov redesigned the I-15 without its gull wing, resorting to a more conventional biplane layout for the I-15 Biz, or I-152. An extra 600 rounds of 0.3-inch 7.62mm ammunition for a total of 2,600 rounds was also catered for as well as an underwing load of 331 pounds or 150 kilograms. These additions, along with a general structural strengthening exercise added to the new variant's weight, and since the same engine was employed, an inevitable decline in performance was noted. Nevertheless, production began in 1937, although deliveries began only in 1938 after several modifications had been incorporated. A number of variations on the I-152 theme were mooted and even prototyped, but the performance of the I-15 in Spain had convinced the VVS of the qualities inherent in Polikorpov's original gullwing layout, and no further development of the I-152 was undertaken. Anxious to prove that the I-152 was a match for the I-15 in combat, the VVS dispatched four squadrons of I-152s to China in November of 1937. These aircraft fought alongside Chinese machines in the Second Sino-Japanese War, proving so successful that the Soviet High Command became convinced of the efficacy of the biplane fighter and continued its development at the expense of monoplane fighters. A number of machines supplied directly to the Chinese proved less successful, probably due to a lack of pilot training. Late in 1938, Stalin authorized the supply of I-152s to the Spanish Republicans as attrition replacements for the I-15s lost in combat. Three batches of 31 machines were sent, and two of these batches being stopped at the French border. 
Those machines which did see combat marked little improvement over the I-15. After the war, 20 I-152s were presented to the winning nationalist side by the French, these machines flying in the ground attack role into the mid-1940s. Soviet I-152s returned to combat over the Nomonhan Plateau in summer of 1939. The adversary was again Japan, and while I-152 I fought valiantly, it became clear that even with an I-16 escort, it was no match for the newer generation of Japanese monoplanes. The final chapter in the I-152's colorful combat career saw these now hopelessly outdated biplanes facing the might of the Luftwaffe during Operation Barbarossa. The aircraft fought hard, but to little avail, and was finally retired after conversion to two-seat configuration from the artillery spotting role in the summer of 1943. I-153 Chaika In the ultimate expression of his biplane fighter line, Polikorpov strove to overcome the problem of increasing speed without installing a far more powerful and therefore heavier engine. Although I-153 engine power increased from the 750 horsepower of the M25 Victor fitted to the prototype through the 800 horsepower of the M62 used in some later production aircraft and ultimately to the 1100 horsepower of the M63 which was introduced from December of 1940, the better part of the I-153's improved performance came from the designer's reversion to his preferred gull-wing configuration and the installation of retractable main landing gear. Two I-153's may have been tested in Spain, but the type's first combat probably came against the Japanese over Mongolia. The Japanese soon came to terms with the new aircraft, however, as did the Finns during their winter and continuation wars against the USSR. Ironically, 11 captured I-153's also flew on the Finnish side, with some success. The Chaika's greatest trial came with the German invasion of the USSR, however. In excess of one-third of the fighters confronting the Germans in the western USSR were I-153s, along with a handful of I-152s. The aircraft gave a good account of themselves, flying as they were very much against the odds. As a testament to the prowess of their pilots and maintainers, a few I-153s fought through the Great Patriotic War to survive into 1945, as a fitting tribute to one of the world's last and greatest biplane fighters.